proposals. Um, and then Zoe and I will do our best to answer any questions that you, that you might have. I guess I'd like to start by just emphasising that this is, these are absolutely proposals. There are no decisions at all taken yet on, on urgent care. Um, first slide. I um, appreciate it's not a great uh, visual for this, so I, I will pick out the main points for people who can't see that. Um, so why, why things need to change for urgent care? So I guess the first thing to say is you've probably seen in the press over recent months and um, probably years about the growing pressure on um, accident and emergency departments. Um, we're always no different to the national picture. NHS England published in February and um, March 2017 the, what you might have heard us refer to as the five year forward view about how we intend to improve healthcare services. One of those priorities was accident and emergency as part of urgent care. NHS England have mandated uh, a national development of urgent treatment centres. And that is an attempt by NHS England to recognise the growing pressure on A&E and the growing demographics and the fact that nationally, many, many AE departments are not meeting the four-hour waiting standard. And if any of you recently used AE, &E, I'm sure you'll be familiar with regular waits, long waits to be seen and treated. So NHS England have mandated us as part of a national development to deliver and develop urgent treatment centres. Um, there is a, a very detailed documentation, which I'm not going to go into tonight, but just to say that in terms of improving standards for urgent care, they require us to meet a, a minimum 27 standards in those developments. They include things like being open a minimum 12 hours a day, having a very consistent standard offer for the public so there's no postcode lottery, and, and that's ensuring that people have urgent access to um, urgent appointments as they need them, with rapid access to diagnostics, things like x-ray scans, MRI, those, those types of things, and having urgent access to um, an NA and &E, an ED consultant as, as needed. So there's a number of standards there that we've got to comply with and ensure are developed. Um, so we've, we've talked about the pressure on A&E and recognising that in many ways the current system is broken and we need to do something very differently and make sure that people who need an urgent appointment need to be seen urgently actually get a good, a good experience and a good outcome. So the national picture, there's a few things that are actually connecting together here, so please bear with me, I'll try and keep this um, fairly straightforward. Talked about the urgent treatment centre, and the, the driver for that is about actually making sure that people who have um, injuries, illnesses that need urgent, uh, urgent clinical opinion, um, they are available, but they're not about life-threatening injuries. So if somebody needs A&E, A&E is still there, and I will go on to uh, A&E in a moment. NHS England are also trying to invest and improve access to GP appointments. Um, you'll have again seen in the press over recent months the driver about having seven day um, appointments, eight to eight. And Wirral again is part of that national development, so there has been additional funding made available nationally. For Wirral there's been an extra two million pounds given to increase same day access to, to GPs and making those available seven days a week. That programme is starting to roll out. Um, by the time we've concluded that work, by the end of March, there will be a minimum of an additional um, 720 uh, additional GP appointments each week, and they will be available across rural. The 111 service is also part of the plans from NHS England. Um, again, I know many people in this room will have used 111, and I have to stand here and acknowledge that's probably been a very, very mixed experience. Some people have had really good service from 111. Other people describe being waiting for long periods of time for a phone call back from a clinician and it, it being quite a clunky, not a good experience, not a good outcome for people. NHS England have recognised that 111 needs to improve and part of this work is about actually having a completely uh, re redesigned 111. That will include having um, clinical assessment and your first, so when you make the phone call, um, you will have a clinician 
actually taking your symptoms, talking to you, doing some diagnosis over the phone, which will be much stronger than the current, the current experience, and they will be able to prescribe electronically. So, for example, if, if you need an urgent prescription, they will be able to make that available at your local pharmacist or at the urgent treatment centre to pick up. They will also be able to book you an appointment, either if you need to be seen urgently at the urgent treatment centre, and that could be within, uh, within two hours, or indeed they can make an appointment for you to see a, a GP in your local area within, on, on the same day, within 24 hours, dependent upon your need. So the 111 offer will be a much stronger offer than it currently is. We are testing um, some of that and the technology for booking at the moment. And as soon as that's ready and we're confident it's robust, there'll be some proper communication out to, to advise people on those changes. And the final, the final area for, that we need to hook in here is, is pharmacists. We've actually got 91 pharmacists across Wirral. And we have to take on board that we don't communicate well with, the, with residents in Wirral about actually what pharmacists can now offer. And although we've tried to improve communication, there's many, many things that pharmacists can actually prescribe and support you with that people are currently going to either walk-in centres or the GP for. So again, we've got to take that on board about making sure you know what pharmacists can provide as a very, very local offer. And actually, we almost have 91 walk-in centres and they're your pharmacists. So what have, what have we been told? So we had over last year um, a lot of workshops, stakeholder e events, trying to get opinions from the public. We, we had a, a further lead listening exercise carried out in February this year, where we had a lot of people um, telling us at various events um, what they felt about the services. Of the people who, who wrote in or talked to us, about 80% of people agreed that there was change needed, that the current system was not working well. We had a very strong message about people that wanted to see a reduction in number of people using A&E unnecessarily, and actually being able to focus A&E on those who really need it. People wanted clearer healthcare choices, um, and better access to GP appointments. That was a very, very strong message. Many, many people saying, we go where we go, we go to A&E, we go to walking centres because we can't get to see a GP when we need to see a GP. Um, and clearly the waiting times at A&E and also the walking centres were a concern for people. And when we look at our current A&E performance, uh, we are absolutely underperforming and that has not that we've been underperforming in the four hour waiting standard the last two or three years. And despite us trying to make improvements and have lots of other local alternatives, we are not actually meeting that requirement. And that jeopardises poor patient, uh, patient care and, and gives a poor experience. So, so we know we've got to do something. Okay, in terms of what we know, Almost half um, of the patients who went to A&E at Arrow Park last year had an illness or injury that could have been treated elsewhere. And so that just under 50%. And, and as I've said earlier, that's clearly putting pressure on A&E. We're not meeting the standard. The people who actually need A&E are then having long waits. And certainly when I've gone in there, I see regularly 85, 90 year old people on trolleys waiting to be seen by a clinician in, in, in a significant degree of discomfort, needing diagnostics, etc. And that is very, very uncomfortable and unacceptable. The activity data shows that actually about 50% of attendances to children's A&E presented with actually minor issues and were discharged within two hours. So what we know is that actually, had they been able to get to uh, a GP um, or have a more local offer, they wouldn't have needed to go to a &E in the first place. We also know that about 24% of people who went to walking centres and minor injury units across Wirral went there for planned dressing services, so for follow-up dressing changes and so on. Final point on this is that Recognising the, the need to increase the GP appointments, um, this is part of us linking with the neighbourhoods and the place-based care model. Um, and we really want to start to see that, that easier access to GPs locally. And our vision is, as part of this urgent treatment centre development and urgent care transformation, is to actually develop what we're referring to as four local health and wellbeing hubs. 
across four localities um, in Wirral, in the, you know, so in West Wirral, South Wirral, Birkenhead and, and Wallasey. And I will, I will touch on that in a moment. So just a few key messages, last couple of slides now, a few key messages um, about what our intentions are. There's absolutely no change to um, Wirral's A&E or Children's A&E, no change at all. We are not talking about closing or moving A&E. We want to improve access to urgent care services across Wirral. That is absolutely what this is about. It's about trying to streamline um, and give a better care experience better access, clearer access for people because the current system is not working well. We want to evolve the services in the local um, health and wellbeing hubs um, across those four localities and I will describe that offer in a moment but over time we believe we can offer more and more from those, those, um, those bases. And as I've said earlier, we want to see much stronger links with primary care and um, that 111 offer and part of that neighbourhood model and evolving that as care closer to home. So what, what are we going out to consult about? Having heard all the messages um, and, and listening to just a few of the facts, um, we've gone out to the public with two options for comments, but genuinely, if there are other thoughts that are coming back, um, we might need to look at, look at other ideas as well, but we've genuinely listened to what we've been told, we've looked at the activity data, we've taken account of the mandated national developments and put all that together and genuinely tried to put forward what we believe are the best two options to address urgent care in Wirral and give a better service. Two options for the urgent treatment centre. We, we took the decision at Governing Body, the CCG, in February to site the urgent treatment centre on the Arrow Park site. And that was for some of the reasons that I described earlier about having rapid access to um, clinicians, rapid access to diagnostics, etc. So we've put in a capital bid. Um, we're hopeful we're going to have that approved. It's due, uh, decision is due any time now. And that would be about developing the Arrow Park site looking at the walk-in centre currently next door to Arrow Park and redesigning that so there's a single front door um, much improved services sitting behind that front door and the urgent treatment centre is being led by GPs, by primary and community care services people being able to walk in or indeed make a bookable appointment and most people being seen within two hours if you have an urgent but not emergency need a and &E is then sitting alongside. If you are, uh, arrive at A&E by ambulance, you go straight into A&E. If you walk into the urgent treatment centre front door but need urgent access to A&E, you would go straight through. So the two options, the differences with those two options, the urgent treatment centre are option one, and we put both these, we believe both options should have above the minimum requirement because we think that's a better offer for people in rural. And we're proposing Option one, open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Option two we're proposing would be open 15 hours a day, uh, obviously seven days a week still. So it's a difference in the opening times, still at the site of Arrow Park. Then what's the change then for what we've talked about, the walking centres and the minor injuries that we've currently got?